Hey guys, welcome to another Proxmox video here today. In today's video, we'll be showing you how you can create a virtual machine in Proxmox. Um, it's actually very similar to like how you would do it in VMware and probably every other hypervisor, just a slightly different GUI. Um, so we'll be using this as essentially our template um, that will hopefully eventually um, automate with Ansible, um, similar to how I've done a lot of my other videos in regards to creating a virtual machine and then getting all the things set up with it. So um, I'm hoping to spend a little bit of time this week with Ansible and Proxmox to kind of iron that out too. So, But in this video, we'll just be creating the VM to essentially get the template created um, and be ready for that automation. So let's get started. All right. So what we'll be doing here um, is actually creating an Oracle Linux 8 VM because we'll use that as our template. Um, so you can click Create VM in the upper right-hand corner of your Proxmox. You can select the node, but in this case, you probably have one node. Um, this is only if you clustered it and had multiple nodes, but we're not doing any clustering right now. I need to buy a few more mini swans for that. Um, we'll select the resource pool. So I created two resource pools to kind of separate the VMs in regards to what I use for my actual lab versus what I use for my videos. Um, so we'll be using Dragon for the videos. The VM ID should be always a unique ID because that is what Proxmox will utilize to kind of identify each virtual machine. Um, so this VM ID actually increments every single time a new VM is created, but you can set a specific one for your own uh, sake. And then you got the name. So we just named this Ol Dragon Ol 8 template um, because this is eventually going to probably hopefully convert it into a template. Then you can select any of your OS. So this is your boot, essentially your boot drive um, for the CD drive. We'll select Oracle Linux 8. We'll hit next here. Um, we essentially don't have anything sp special here. We hit next for the system. This we will set to 40 because I, I like having 40 gigs. It's, it's kind of my sweet spot in regards to things. Um, everything else you can leave as default for, for Oracle Linux 8 box. Um, the only thing that would be interesting to change is your bus or your device. Um, if you were to create a Windows virtual machine, you would probably need, you would need to use SATA, uh, SATA or IDE um, because it mounts differently the hard drive. So if you use SCSI, um, I believe that's what I used last time, it didn't, wouldn't show up during the install. So that is just something to note um, if you are doing a Windows virtual machine instead of a Linux one here. Um, then we got cores and sockets. So essentially, um, we'll do two cores here just to speed up the installation process. And then you can select your memory. We'll also just do two gigs of RAM for memory as well. Um, in regards to your bridge, most likely you'll be using VM bridge BR0, which would be your default bridge that is essentially connected to your existing network. What I'm going to be selecting is bridge one, which is a secondary NIC that I created um, so that this is my essentially um, uh, dragon network, um, which is more of an internal network. And then you can hit the start after create at the bottom left and hit finish here. Um, so it will spin up and it essentially should start up once it is ready, um, which is should be pretty quick. Um, I am really honestly pleasantly surprised by how fast um, everything kind of goes on this machine with the NVMe and everything. Um, I've never gone through a Windows server install as fast as I have with this, um, which is kind of crazy, honestly, because I was just like, man, I kind of blinked and I was like, I was w waiting for paint to dry, like expecting that. And I was just like, wait, it's already done. <laughs> um, so hopefully this install will go uh, just as quick, but you can click on console over here, um, which will bring you essentially the console access to that virtual machine. We'll install Oracle Linux 8 here by going, uh, hitting the up arrow and then hitting enter. Um, and then letting it boot up to be where the installation will get started here. Um, so we'll give it a few seconds. And the installation GUI should pop up here. Starting the installer. There we go. See? We're pointing a bug at logs. And here we go. It is going to pop up now. There we go. So essentially, this is like the, a similar installer. So if you watched my, um, like one of my like first 
few videos that I created for this YouTube channel, we actually went through something very similar with VMware. Um, so, you know, you select your uh, language as English, unless you want to do a different language. I've been curious about doing a different language and then realizing I probably would just decide to put it back, re rebuild it in English. <laughs> Uh, you can see the disk installation. We'll check that because we'll leave everything as default. Um, we're going to do just the minimal install um, because we don't actually need anything extra. It's just the server essentially. So we'll just do the minimal install, which will make it very quick as well. Um, we'll set a root password here so that we can log in as root once it's done as well. Um, and essentially that is all you need to essentially set, uh, we can set the time zone to. Um, in here, Chicago done, um, and we can do the NIC, but we're gonna we'll we will we will do the NIC stuff on the actual virtual machine itself instead. So we can hit begin installation here. Um, so it will prepare to install, create all the uh, mappings for the drives, download the needed packages, which is super nice doing the minimal install because it will only download the packages that you need as opposed to, you know, like everything that you need for GUI and all that. So this will go significantly faster than my GUI install if you were to use a GUI install. So there's only like 405 packages. And as you can see, it's going by pretty quick. So while that goes through, I'll show you a little bit more about Proxmox here. So we have, if you select a VM, you can see the summary, which will give you graphs of CPU usage, memory, network traffic, and disk IO. Um, kind of give you an overview here of the HA state, which notes on how much CPU and memory it's using. Um, then there's the hardware, which is essentially similar to the interface that we had before in regards to selecting our hardware. So if you hit on any of these, you can actually hit edit and then reconfigure it to do whatever you want. So if you want to add more RAM, you could. If you want to remove RAM, you could. Um, I don't think it's hot swappable off the top of my head. Um, so you would have to do a reboot to actually apply the, the change for those ones. Um, but you can as well as add more devices. So you can add another hard drive, add a CD drive or a network NIC uh, in regards to if you had two NICs you wanted to add for it. Um, but you can essentially select and edit or add more if you needed to. Um, there's a few things that you can do with certain things. So like a hard drive, you can deattach or move storage or reassign owner or resize. There's a few options there. Um, then kind of looking down, you can also do snapshots. So you can actually take a snapshot of the VM as well in Proxmox um, so that you can essentially revert back, um, which is super nice if you're doing something very sketchy and you're like, I'm not entirely sure how this is going to work and you don't really have a rollback pair. So that is also very nice. Um, so we'll go back to the console, which is just, you know, the console access here. Um, and we will fast forward the video to when this is essentially finished installing. All right, so now it has finished doing the installation, which was actually like another 30 seconds. Um, now we can hit reboot system in the lower right. Uh, and this will essentially uh, exit out of the installer and reboot the machine so that we can get into a console. Um, so we'll hit enter here. Um, and it should essentially pull up like any other virtual machine that we have uh, essentially here and give us the login, which is, you know, what we set at the very beginning um, with the root user and password. So now you can log in as the user and then essentially now do all the configurations that you would like um, to get set up before you convert this to a template, um, which I believe you can just right click, yeah, right click and then convert to template after you have completed all the steps that you need. So um, we won't bore you with those steps here, um, but uh, essentially all we will be doing is just doing some updates and then uh, setting the IP address to be our template IP address for this video. So um, anywho, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.